Welcome to your next meld guide. This is the first part of a series on teaching you how to choose components for your next PC build. This is of course on picking your CPU. So stay tuned. Welcome back to Gamer Meld. Today is all about a computer CPU or central processing unit. If you've looked at buying one lately, you were probably overwhelmed with the amount of choices. AMD, Intel, i3, Ryzen 5, K stuff, Core, Pentium, overclocking, etc, etc. Well, in this how-to, I'm going to show you how to pick the best processor for you. And this actually brings me to my first point. There isn't really a one-size-fits-all processor. In fact, you could easily spend more and get less from it. That's why the first thing you've got to ask yourself is what you plan to do with your new computer. This is Gamer Meld, so I know most of you are gamers, but is that all you do? Do you want to stream as well? Are you in college and for what? These are all important questions. When it comes to gaming alone, I'll definitely say something you may not expect. Your CPU choice isn't very important. Nope, not really at all actually. Unless you plan to buy a 1080 Ti or Titan XP and play at 1080p, your game will almost always, and with very little variance, be no different based on your CPU. Why? Because in most every case, your GPU is your bottleneck. Why do you think reviewers use the best GPUs they have to review a CPU? It's so they can take away the bottleneck as much as possible. Otherwise, if the GPU bottlenecks the system first and all systems have the same GPU, the scores will all be the same, and you can't call a winner. So really, as long as you get a modern desktop 4 or 6 core CPU, you should be completely fine. But of course, that's just if you want a game. If you plan to do more, a higher core CPU is more important, but there's a limit. Most anything you'll be doing, from gaming, surfing the web, even editing photos, simply don't take advantage of a ton of cores. No gamer or even 90% of professionals can utilize a Xeon Higher Core Core X or Threadripper CPU. And if you're one of those people, you probably know who you are. Simply put, it's quite hard to fully parallelize processes on a CPU, at least to do it efficiently and without spending too much time in development. With that said, as CPUs are forced to rely on more cores instead of die strengths, thanks to the limit of how small we can make transistors, upping core count is a solution. So software developers may be more inclined moving forward to add said multi-core support. But as of right now, that's really not the case. Now, before you think it, let me reply. Don't future-proof. It's something many people discuss, and I'll never agree with it. Don't get more than you need now in the hopes of upgrading to meet it later, especially because you'll almost always sacrifice something you need now for something you'll probably never use before you upgrade it anyway. In practical use, most people simply don't do it, and with the fast evolution of new parts, it's rare that you won't end up replacing it. The next thing is more specific. When it comes to Intel, some consumer CPUs have a K after the name and others don't. The K simply means that it has an unlocked multiplier for manual overclocking. Now, many people are scared to overclock, which is understandable, though I'd say it's not too difficult. But, if you know you won't be overclocking, Intel's newest generation of K CPUs have either an equal boost clock to the less expensive non-K, or the K model is only slightly higher, so you may be better off getting the cheaper non-K version. When it comes to AMD, it's kind of backwards. Some Ryzen CPUs have an X at the end. Now, they can all be manually overclocked, so the X means it essentially has a better automated boost clock. And while there is spinning involved, most of the non-X models can manually overclock as high as their X counterpart. So if you do plan on overclocking, you'd probably be better off with the non-X variant to save some money and get very similar results. My final tip is one of practicality. Get what you can afford. If you game and are debating between an i5 and i7 or 6 and 8 core Ryzen, but it'll cause you to go from a mid-range GPU to a lower one, get the lower model CPU. So while that does it for this meld guide, let me know some of your tips for finding the right CPU down in the comments below. If you want to see the rest of the parts in the guide, make sure to subscribe. And as always, have a great day.